hosting our webinar today. So we will show you first the Provile's Board of Institution from CBUSA, CBSUA, and from Wembutan. So here they are. University of Muhammadiyah Bhutan or UM Bhutan is the business charity of the largest Islamic organization in Indonesia founded by Kiai Haji Ahmad Dalam Muhammadiyah. This college is located in the heart of Pawan City, Southeast Sulawesi Province. This city is known as the owner of the largest castle in the world. On the other hand, Babo City also has a strategic location as the connecting city in the western and eastern regions of Indonesia. So the service and trade sector continue to grow in line with the city's development. Babo City has a variety of other potential ranging from estate crops, beautiful beaches, stunning natural and cultural tourism objects, and various Islamic historical relics of the Bhutan Sultanate. University of Muhammadiyah Bhutan, through the governance principles of good university governance, was presented to provide answers to the needs of excellent and professional human resources through the implementation of education and teaching based on entrepreneurship, conducting research and publications that are adaptive to technological developments and relying on community service-based research and innovation. The character of the students through the inculcation of the values of Al-Islam and the Muhammadiyahan, supported by the development of global competitiveness becomes the strategic vision of the University of Muhammadiyah Bhutan. Public trust to University of Muhammadiyah Bhutan proved by the increasing number of students from year to year, which in 2019, University of Muhammadiyah Bhutan received more than 1,627 new students and is placed on the second position of South East Sulawesi in obtaining the number of new students. Universitas Muhammadiyah Buton memiliki visi menjadi universitas yang profesional, unggul dan islami yang memiliki daya saing secara global. Visi ini akan dapat dicapai melalui penyelenggaraan tata kola perguruan tinggi yang islami dengan prinsip Good University Governance Penyelenggaraan pendidikan dan pengajaran secara profesional yang berjiwa entrepreneurship Penyelenggaraan penelitian dan publikasi yang berkontribusi terhadap perkembangan ilmu pengetahuan, teknologi, dan seni Penyelenggaraan pengabdian pada masyarakat berbasis riset dan inovasi Penyelenggaraan pembinaan sipitas akademika berdasarkan nilai al-Islam dan kemahamadian. Penyelenggaraan kerjasama dengan perguruan tinggi, pemerintah, dan lembaga lainnya pada tingkat nasional, regional, dan internasional. In the field of University of Muhammadiyah Bhutan Education, it continues to improve academic and non-academic services to its academic community increasing the capacity and competence of lecturers continues to be a concern of University of Muhammadiyah Bhutan which is carried out in various activities ranging from lecturer further study support, seminars, workshops, and lecturer internship programs. University of Muhammadiyah Bhutan has 147 lecturers who have master's and doctoral degrees. There are seven faculties and 15 study programs, including the Faculty of Social and Political Sciences, consists of Government Studies and Communication Studies, Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, consists Elementary School Teacher Education, Guidance and Counseling, Indonesian Language and Literature Education, Biology Education, Early Childhood Teacher Education, Faculty of Economics, consists of 
accounting and management study programs. Faculty of Islamic Religion consists of Islamic Education and Awal Asasiya study program. Faculty of Engineering consists of Civil Engineering study program. Faculty of Agriculture consists of Agribusiness and Aquatic Resources Management study program. Faculty of Law consists of Law study programs. To support the teaching learning process and other activities, University of Muhammad Yabutan has built a representative facilities and infrastructure. It also completes campus facilities with a library, mosque, internet network for Wi-Fi, civil engineering laboratory, basic science laboratory, computer and language laboratory, micro teaching, early childhood teacher education laboratory, judicial room, counseling service unit, Wonam Korea Foundation and Office of International Affairs, Hall, Sang Surya Mart and Representative Parking Area. University of Muhammad Yabutan currently has three lecturing buildings, namely four more lecture buildings on the Bombay Street Global City and one lecturing building and two floor lecture buildings in Boros Bau Bau Kasarawaja Street. To support the student character, University of Muhammad Yabutan has committed to develop the potential interests and talents through student activities such as BEM at the faculty level, HMPS at the study program level, student art and sport activity unit, student entrepreneurship unit, tapak suci, and other extracurricular activities. The development plan is also being prepared for an area of 17 hectares to be devoted to the construction of an integrated campus. University of Muhammad Yabutan has ideas to get global reputation and to demonstrate it through various collaborations locally, nationally, and internationally. Joint international community and cultural program has been held every year since 2018 with foreign students from China, Saudi Arabia, and Tajikistan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Pengembangan Akademik Universitas Muhammadiyah Buton, penyelenggaraan Catur Dharma secara holistik merupakan target kami. Dalam bidang pendidikan, Universitas Muhammadiyah Buton senantiasa berinovasi dalam transformasi pengetahuan kepada mahasiswa, guna membentuk mahasiswa yang profesional dan berjiwa entrepreneurship, beriman dan berahlak tarima berdasarkan nilai-nilai al-Islam dan kemuhammadiyahan. Universitas Muhammadiyah Buton menerapkan tata kelola berbasis group university governance. Untuk itu, pengembangan kompetensi dosen, pembangunan sarana dan prasarana yang representatif, pengembangan IT, serta investasi pembangunan kampus yang Optimal, Universitas Muhammadiyah Buton berkomitmen memberikan dan membangun tata kelola keuangan yang sehat, transparan, serta akuntabel. UN Buton konsisten memberikan layanan akademis dan non-akademis yang inovatif. UN Buton memulainya pada saat pembentukan karakter mahasiswa baru melalui ESG training. UM Buton menyadari bahwa kerjasama adalah poin penting untuk mewujudkan perguruan tinggi yang berdaya yang global. UM Buton juga memiliki komitmen yang utuh sebagai bagian dari perguruan tinggi Muhammadiyah dalam memberikan kontribusi maksimal bagi pengembangan al-Islam dan kemuhammadiaan seluruh sifatasi akademika khususnya dan masyarakat pada umumnya menuju masyarakat yang berkemajuan. Demikian, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ayah kuliah di Universitas Muhammadiyah Betong.
Central Bicol State University of Agriculture in its 101 years as a well-known agricultural educational institution commenced greater socio-economic development leaps in November 2018. Aimed at becoming an agricultural research university of global standards, we initiated strategies to realize our dreams anchored to the three principles, discipline, respect, and care. With the steadfast support and determinations of the university community, we elevated CBSUA into the heights of terms of instruction, research, extension, and production, administration, and internationalization. True to its commitment of ensuring excellent quality of education, CBSUA produced top-notch graduates in board exam placers, hired and promoted outstanding faculty members, accommodated higher number of enrollees, provided more scholarship opportunities, training local and abroad, increased incentives for board placers, improved learning and laboratories attained program compliance in curricular offerings accreditation, instituted new curricular programs, co-hosted national conferences on economics, arts and culture, and research and education, engaged the partnership with known universities in the Philippines, including University of the Philippines Los Banos and in Asia and the Pacific, and answered the call of flexible learning due to the pandemic through online admission and virtual learning platform and provision of laptops and TV sets for the faculty and academic offices. Just recently, CBSUA is declared as the Bicol Regional Gender and Development Center. Our pledge to attain CBCA's vision transformed the research and innovation cluster in order to reach a larger number of communities and beneficiaries. Various research centers are established. Researches were conducted, published, research-based technologies were utilized, higher income generated from projects was noted, and more extension activities were well disseminated and implemented through its radio programs. The stingless fee production is declared the university flagship program leading to global competence in industry. CBSUA received grants and aids and machines from ASAP, DA, DOSD, and Bellevue. Likewise, the university sealed more collaborations with various partners and sponsors, including Department of Agriculture, Department of Agrarian Reform, and Agriculture Training Institute. With its partners, GBSUA launched the Virtual Farm Academy, the first of its kind in Asia. Salamat sa Central Local State University of Agriculture sa pangunginat ni Dr. Alberto Natere na kahit ka po, mismong personal na nagbibis sa Samuyang Park, hindi sa Dula. Dumang hindi po na mati si sinseridad kang CBSUA na magtabang sa mga parauma. Liwag, congratulations sa CBSUA sa ika-onusing anniversary. Diyos mabalas po sa Indong Maray. As we become more competitive, we comply with standards. CBSUA improved its facilities by continual physical plant and facilities development, rehabilitation, and completion. Hired more skillful personnel, increased benefits of the teaching and non-teaching employees, and confirmed contract of security and janitorial services. In order to support the attainment of the vision, the university revised its organizational structure re-imaging and renaming clusters. The five-year development plan redirected all programs, projects, and activities to one CBSUA system, a university compliant of ISO standards.
Part of the innovations integrated by President Napari was the creation of the external and international linkages, now renamed as Business and External Affairs Cluster, which handles partnership and ties in the international arena. CBSUA closed collaborations with Howis University and Vibes University in Belgium and Universitas Maria Kudus and University of Mataram in Indonesia, to name a few. The students and faculty were sent to famous universities outside the Philippines for training, exposure, conferences, research presentations, and corroborations. CBSUA answered the call of not just going international, but being known internationally. Central Bicol State University of Agriculture addressed the COVID-19 challenges through its initiatives. CBSOA continues to receive awards for its excellent service. All of these accomplishments are because of you, my dear CBSOA community. We will only continue achieving our vision if we constantly move together as one CBSOA. Let us continue building a stronger, more inclusive, and more productive university, known for its impact in Bicol region and the world. One university, one system, one CBSUA. 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 Join us in the singing of the CBSK. Thank you. 
Those are the profiles both of the institution, CBSUA and Wembutan. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to greet first Rector of Universitas Muhammadiyah Butan, Mrs. Dr. Waudi Azalian, SPMM, and all the amazing speakers for today, both from CBSUA and from Wembutan. There are Mr. Lieso Salerino and Mr. Angelo Francis Atole. Please welcome to Wembutan, sir, even just only by virtual like this. And our great speaker from Wembutan, uh, Mr. Wardana Esot MSE. And then, of course, all the participants that joined the webinar today. Yeah, for the first agenda, I would like to invite uh, Rector of Universitas Muhammadiyah Bhutan to give her opening remarks. Please welcome to Mrs. Aliani Espinosa. is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My Excellency, to President Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Philippines. My Excellency, to the Speaker of the International from Philippines, Mr. Dr. Selerino Lisa, Mr. Angelo Francis Etelo at the head Department of Animal Science. My Excellency, to Mr. Wardana as the of Agricultural Faculty and all the participants from Central Biko State University of Agriculture and University Muhammadiyah Buton. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. First of all, let's send praise and grateful to get El Mekti, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of his pleasing and guiding, so we are given healthy and can join this international webinar called by Central Bicol State University of Agriculture and University Muhammadiyah Buton. In this good opportunity, I would like to say thank you very much to the President of the Central Bicol State University of Agriculture that he support and welcome the implementation of this webinar. Hopefully, this is a step in beginning of the both institution and continue again in other program. Israeli as an effort to increase and expand partnership networking in Asia. 
I want to say welcome to the speaker from Philippines. Within this moment, from the same field to study with UM Buton, that is Faculty of Agriculture. I would like to say thank you to all webinar participants. Hope the activity is useful in this uh, very amazing opportunity due to getting knowledge from reliable source as far. Ladies and gentlemen, come together to open an international webinar on agriculture in 4.0 with the word Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The international webinar is officially open. Watch the eyes, close this door here. That is the idiom in the webinar meeting this time because now we can only meet virtually. Hope the COVID-19 disaster will pass and we can collaborate again in other program directly. Once again, thank you so much. Nasrum Nalaiho Patun Karib, Wabak Siril Mukminin. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you, Madam, for your opening remarks. Yeah. Something that I want to quote from the words from uh, Rector that have said before, uh, with his, uh, with her words that far to the eyes, close to the heart. Because as we know that the condition like nowadays, uh, because we have uh, COVID-19 disaster, so it's difficult for us to help uh, program directly. So we can only do that by full tool like this. That's it. Once again, thank you, ma'am, for yeah, opening remarks. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, so the main topic of uh, the event of international webinar today, that is, international webinar on agriculture in 4.0 era. So this is a very interesting topic. So later the speakers will have their own uh, topic related to that issue. Okay, for, before I start uh, the presentation of the speakers, I would like to uh, inform you the rules or regulation related to this webinar. Uh, firstly, for the participant, please mute your speaker to make effective the uh, webinar later. And then we, we, we have three speakers today, yes? So we will uh, give the chance for them to present their topics. And then at the end of the presentation, we will, uh, the participants can uh, give the questions uh, by type on the chat box. Uh, I will try to read one by one later. Okay. Okay, because uh, rector have another activity right now, meeting again. So, thank you very much, madam, for your time. Yes, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope all the participants will try to pay attention uh, because the topic uh, today very interesting one. So you can take the benefit and advantages from the topic from the speakers, from the great speakers. I I say like that. Okay, for the first chance, I will invite the speaker from CBSUA. Yeah. Mr. Dr. Luis Salerino with his topic about agriculture 4.0 in agroforestry. So please welcome Dr. Luis Salerino. Time is yours.
itu wala bak di bagi nak ano dali Good morning everyone. Good morning everybody to the Universitas Moham and the University of Central Bicol State University of Agriculture and its participants. I would like to greet you a nice day to, to, to all participants because the topic is really very interesting to all of us. Okay. My topic is about uh, agriculture for and its influences in agroforestry. You know very well that uh, our battle cry is uh, the sustainable development of our agriculture as well as in forestry. Now, the two countries, the Indonesia and the Philippines, has to do the same uh, geobiophysical characteristics in terms of agriculture and in terms of forestry. So needless to say that we are uh, speaking of the same uh, problems, issues, and challenges faced by our constituents. And uh, I don't know whether or not which one of the country has more advantage in terms of agriculture and in terms of forestry, because we, we belong to the same uh, level of development. So agriculture, according to Rusto, is the lowest form of uh, stage of development. And uh, we have gone so much uh, in the first, second, and the third industrial revolution, which now becoming uh, the battle cry of every ASEAN region. Because uh, as we all know, the, the third world country is very much lagged behind with this third, uh, this uh, uh, Western country, like uh, the United States, the Belgium, Japan and the Great Britain. So we have the same nature, we have the same status in terms of agriculture and in terms of forestry. So my topic is basically not new to everyone because I know that the academy is very much aware of the stages of development that we have had since the 18, the, since the era of uh, revolution, which uh, started in uh, 1914, or let's say, uh, let's say, uh, way back uh, 1814. Okay. So this, the second revolution is also characterized by a dramatic change in the advancement of uh, technology. And now the third is on the advancement of computer, the third, and now the fourth is more on the uh, artificial intelligence. So what is the influence of this in agroforestry? Well, uh, we know very well that uh, in your graph, uh, in your uh, figures, we have the society as the focal point of development. And uh, in terms of resource mobilization process, we uh, speak of the three important uh, System. So we are mobilizing in terms of a system in which uh, the first uh, component of a system is uh, the production. So in terms of production, we always started with uh, this what we call from seeds to merchantable crop. So the production started from seeds to merchantable crop. But what is the implication of this in terms of agriculture 4.0? It means that uh, our production should adhere to the needs of the community. So we have to maximize. In fact, we cannot just maximize, but we have to optimize the production in terms of its uh, uh, product, product, products or services that could be derived from our land. Okay. So, so in terms of uh, agriculture, our production is now being enhanced by the use of uh, an intelligence machine. Now, in terms of utilization, we, as much as possible, would like to minimize uh, wastage in processing of our product. So the, the utilization started from harvesting 
and after processing of what products that we could derive from it. So the, the next uh, system that we could uh, use in the mobilization of our resources is the conservation. Of course, no, no nations in the world would like to, uh, to deplete its natural resources. No nations in the world would like to make the resources stagnant, of course. That's why we have to mobilize resources. So in mobilizing our resources, we need conservation. And this is the wise use of utilization. Okay. So if we, we adhere to these processes, production, utilization, conservation, we are in the process of optimization. Okay, what is optimization, by the way? Optimization is the act of choosing the most feasible and possible alternatives, not only in terms of quantity, but also in terms of quality. Okay. So this is the battle cry of a management to become efficient and effective. And these two jargons are the reason, the very reasons why we are uh, projecting the use of artificial intelligence as the new era of uh, industrial revolution. Uh, gone are the days that our uh, production start, our production uh, started from the low level use of technology, such as uh, use of manual labor and tools and tractors later on. And now we are now using the robotics as, uh, as the most efficient and effective uh, mode of uh, so this is the answer to the, our battle cry for the aging population, the use of uh, robotics, the use of uh, artificial intelligence. So here, we do not have so much deal of uh, what uh, mobilization process would like to adapt. The key word here is that we have the same process of uh, resource mobilization. We have the same dimension of resource mobilization. But, but the only thing different is that the application of technology. The application of technology which facilitate the intrusion of human resources. And of course, the entail cost of operation. So maybe uh, this is uh, one of the challenges that uh, we in the agriculture and the forestry sector would have to assess. You know? okay. We have so very overwhelming uh, concept that when we use technology, we will progress. But in every technology that we are uh, employing, there is always a trade-off. And later on, what trade-off is that? Okay. Okay. So here, some of the jargons that uh, we in the agriculture would have to learn under the new concept of agriculture for. So agriculture for, Point zero is the it it, it integrates uh, no, no, excuse me. It integrates the series of innovation in order to produce agricultural product. So this innovation in globe precision farming, uh, information and internet and the technology and the big data in order to achieve greater production efficiency or efficiency. So what is precision farming? Well, precision farming uh, is a farming management concept based on observing, measuring, and responding to inter intra field variability in crops. Precision agriculture uh, research aims to define decision support system for the whole farm with the, with the okay with the with expected input while preserving the natural resources. So uh, artificial intelligence is the ability of digital computer and computer control robot to perform task intelligent being of a human. You know? So we are uh, mechanizing the role of human here. So remote sensing, blockchain technology, internet things of internet of things, the LOT, IOT, are some of the important jargons that we should have to learn in, in the concept of agriculture 4.0. Now, LIDAR is one also of a technology which uh, give impetus to the development of more sophisticated technology, such as the, the use of uh, drone in order to come up with uh, 
the very high tech or the hybrid tech just of surveying, mapping, making an inventory in other forms of uh, geophysical and geospatial undertaking in our lands. So uh, they very much uh, emphasize on this point as the use of the drone, the robots, the data information, communication, technology. So these are the four important uh, components that plays an important role in agora. It could be very futuristic in some way that uh, our uh, resources, our human resources need to be capacitated. So in this particular era, agriculture evolved with science technology. It's only a, uh, a matter of time until the internet of things reaches the farm scene. So what are the things that uh, we have to expect under the concept of agriculture 4.0? One is the optimization of the production. So I has, as I had defined a while ago, Optimization is the act of choosing the most feasible and possible alternatives, not only in terms of quantity, but also in terms of quality. So meaning that in a real sense, in a real situation, we cannot, uh, we cannot maximize the productivity in our lands because of so many externalities or let's say, because of so many constraints associated to it. So the concept of optimization is only finding ways, finding the most feasible and possible alternatives that we can both have satisfaction in terms of our desire, in terms of our environment, and in terms of our uh, profitability. So kumbaga, I, I, anyway, I am speaking Filipino. So it, it seems that uh, we have to be at the minimum level of, of utilization. So here, in terms of optimized efficiency, this could be measured in terms of input and output relationship. So what is meant by optimized uh, uh, production in terms of efficiency, in terms of input output? The, the, the parameter or the indicator of efficiency is that when we achieve higher output than with our out input, you know. So, means uh, the profitability, which can be quantitatively measured in terms of input and output relationship. So the key word of efficiency is that when we have output greater than our input, we have profit, okay? So efficiency. Now the number two is that we have the optimized quality. So this is the, the desired, the, the desirability, this, the level of satisfactions that everyone could be derived from our undertakings is measured in terms of quality. So, so quality can also be measured in terms of uh, the degree of satisfaction, the cost involved in every undertakings that we have, no matter how cost it is, but if it is being desired or being uh, derived with greater satisfaction, we are at quality. Okay. So these two, the, the, the objective number one and two, are this what we call optimization. If we could achieve efficiency and the quality, we are optimistic, okay? That's the battle cry of our agroforestry because agroforestry is the dichotomy of knowledge in agriculture and, and forestry, which are married into one, okay? So we both produce agricultural crops simultaneously with uh, forest crops or, or tree crops in between or in a row or in a form of rotation. Okay. Then another thing is the minimize environmental impact. So when we speak of uh, minimize environmental impact, this is the trade-off that we have to consider. Although we achieve uh, greater production, but we distorted our environment, uh, the resource valuation says that it is not yet an efficient, it's not yet an effective because we are factoring in the environmental cost associated to our production. So uh, this one is more uh, weighted or more considered in the optimization theory. Okay. Number four is the minimized production associated drudgeries. You know, okay. 
associated drudgeries. What are these things? Later on, you will understand what a drudgery means. You know? Drawbacks in other forms of heavy loads. So with the use of your information technology, you will lose your, or you will minimize your drudgeries and even broken dreams. <laughs> drudgeries and broken dreams. Anyway, the next is that uh, here, in the agriculture 4.0, we have a dramatic change which can be compared with the analogical and mechanical technology with the use of internet of things, the IoT. So instead of mechanical technology, which resulted more of a manual, we can now use the interconnectivity to communicate, to instruct, to use, to utilize uh, the senses without uh, touching anything. You know? So more of preservation can be assessed through internet of things. We cannot uh, have direct contact, but we could access to what we wanted to be among our constituents. So another thing is that the no sensing available. So that was before in a small scale farm. But in a larger farm, we have sensing technology. What do we mean by sensing technology? We can use uh, senses, we can use uh, things in order to implement our uh, farming activities. Before there was no data or record, but now we have dealing with big data. In fact, we already have this cloud computing, you know, everything which we can now store in the atmosphere are already been uh, placed in our website. There is no such impossible thing around with the use of internet, you know, except those which cannot be reached by our senses. A spirit cannot be reached by our senses. Next thing is a manual labor. So the dramatic change of uh, traditional agriculture is the use of the robotics now. You know. Later on, you will see how it, it can be uh, uh, understood by every one of us. Now, the use of hand or animal power has been dramatically changed with automated equipment. No wonder that in a finger thief, in a finger of our uh, uh, senses, in a se sensor, or let's say uh, this is what we call the remote control, we can run an automobile, we can run um, an equipment, and we can run uh devices without much uh, doing going to the field so farmer experiences was also changed into a more satellite image and positioning with the use of gps gone are the days that we are, we are making surveys when we when we are making uh, uh inventory when we are making uh, let's say collections of information on the ground <laughs> We go directly to the ground and get data from it. But now with the use of GPS, with the use of remote sensing and with the use of LiDAR or with the use of other uh, gadgets, we can now use to collect data from the atmosphere. And, and we can also have the location, et cetera, et cetera. So nothing would be responsible. So more, um, indirect use of human resources has been transformed into the use of internet of things okay so take note that robotics refer to the system or machines where increased level of intelligence are added to the machine for its autonomous work or a new intelligent machine is developed for an existing application Automated equipment refers to the existing system where some elements have been automated for transporting or working without human intervention. So this is the most dramatic change that we would want. We know very well that many young generations today you know, are not anymore uh, attracted to agriculture because of the hardship of cultivation because of the ruggedness of the terrain and the labor that entails so much uh, terribly drudgery on the part of our youth. And even parents would not like their, their children 
to experience the problems of cultivating a very rugged terrain and yet uh, derive low profit on it. So maybe the, uh, the advent of agriculture 400 will enhance more youth entrepreneurs, more youth farmers to replace our old farmers because of the easiness, because of the uh, wonders of technology. Okay. So what is then the, the application, the, the uh, information-based management cycle that an advanced agriculture would be? First on crop sensor, we have crop sensor. Okay. The platform software, of course. Then the data. The data is with the use of artificial intelligence or AI. And the decision, of course, the human resources. And the actuation, which could be uh, used by the field worker or the the rank and file people doing the field works. So this, this uh, figure, the information-based management cycle for advanced agriculture shows the stages and the element that intervenes in the digital sensor monitor, the crop to generate data captured by a platform. So this process by specific software and artificial intervention Options are provided that the farmers decide on how to act on crops directly with their own equipment or directly by the automated equipment. So there can be no more going to the field. It should be the, the gadgets, it should be the technology which will uh, provide us information without going to the field. So very easy, you know, very easy for us to, to gather information with the use of our gadgets, cell phone. GPS, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, your internet. With the use of your internet connectivity, you can have so many data that could be captured by your gadgets. So there will be a less uh, human and uh, field direct contact. That's why we are here. And in fact, we can use that now. You know? With the use of uh, the, the gadgets, we can communicate very effectively. And we can adapt this in farming, especially in monitoring your field works, in monitoring the, the processes by which your activity could be done. Okay. So monitoring is the most efficiently done with the use of our gadgets, with the use of our internet connectivity. So agriculture 4.0 offers many possibilities. So what are these possibilities? The drone and other sensing platform can provide information in real time. They produce image recapture, different agronomical parameters. The alert farmers of crops progress, the status of the soil, the search of the risk and pests and diseases and the development of weeds. So all these things are uh, being monitored by uh, your camera by your uh, uh, GPS or LiDAR or senses, which can be uh, used instead of going to the field. So the state of interconnectivity will be something previously unseen in agriculture with a high level of information. It captures the analysis, processing between the various pieces of equipment and the system. Of course, all the information needs to be processed by the farmers who can then assess the optimal solution or required action. So with the use of your iPad, you can do anything on it. You can relay information in the field. So here, the equipment can make use of the sense data to optimize input, use according to particular needs in the field. So uh, if you look at the figure, there is what we call the remote senses, the graphic concept of agriculture in a farm operation level. So how, how uh, we use that, it could be properly engineered. But in our situation today, uh, many can, cannot afford to this uh, system because uh, as we have said, the technology is costly. The technology is, uh, 
way 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 uh, futuristic and and um, we have to have to reflect so much on what will be its implication in our natural environment okay one ita this one is the use of agrobot what the agrobot can perform a best area task the first commercially available agrobot covers the three main task one eliminating waste look at the figure your your weeds can be uh, done by your robots so no human intervention monitoring of pests and diseases can also be captured by the use of its camera and more or more so on harvesting now we have the precision harvesting if harvesting is done by human being uh chances are damages could be uh, greater than with the use of machine because of the precision because of the timely and the, the sophisticated movement that can be controlled by the remote sensing okay. an agro robot offers cost saving opportunity as, as it reduces labor requirements it limits the use of inputs pesticide and reduces yield losses resulting from the late detection of pests and diseases so you should look at the figure uh, that we have shown figure five a concept of an, of an agro robot uh, wielding mechanically with the beam of light okay. so here is another situation now if you if you look at the setting if you look at the setting this is basically a wide bus of agriculture and uh, this can only be applied to a wide area which cannot be applied in the areas like the philippines could have a very small uh, land holdings uh, and it would be futile to invest in this so, so later on uh, we will see how do we reflect the use of uh, this technology the drone robots the data and information communication technology are uh, components are combined together to get the desired result. Another thing in the harvesting shown okay, here is also the use of cultivation machine for production. And also this one, the diverse drivers of adoption. At present, the main driver of farmers to invest in agro-robot regards the economic and environmental aspects. The agricultural robot can eliminate these gaps and reduce the cost of the specialized manpower. Moreover, they can operate over a long period of time as they are not subject to limitation, physical and legal humans, of course. We know very well that humans are uh, having low endurance than a machine. At harvest, some models are even able to pick fruits or even vegetables individually depending on the stage of ripening so in in um, why is it that this could be uh, used in agroforestry because in agroforestry we are uh, producing nuts we are producing beans we are producing uh, uh, we are producing uh, corn we are producing wheat and other forms of intercrops that could be associated in our forest resources so what are the challenges what are the challenges and influences that uh, being associated to the use of uh, intelligence machine as a part of uh, as a part of our uh, technological advancement in the agriculture 4.0 okay the implementation of technology entails challenges and influences and main challenges for adoption of agriculture robotics are Number one, ownership and management of digital data. So uh, when we speak of ownership, it's associated here the, the copyright. It is associated here, of course, who will, who will have the control about the digital data. Okay, so of course, the, the copyright says that he who generates the data he who reserves for the data has the local ownership. Okay. But in a sense that we are utilizing a cloud data, which, which everybody 
has uh, the right of ownership. No one can prohibit us from accessing to our cloud data. Of course, diba? So see here, the ownership lies on the degree of your privacy or the ownership lies on the degree of your indulgence to get the data. Okay. So when we speak of management of digital data, in our country, we call this risk no use, a property which, which does not own any ownership. Everybody owns the data. So needless to say that when we are gathering data information from the atmosphere, nobody could uh, prohibit us except the law, except the policies governing in every country. So we do not have so big deal about ownership nowadays because uh, the, uh, the accessibility is already at hand. You know? it's, it, and it's already been a part of our routine functions. Data could be accessed anywhere. Data could be accessed everywhere. And data could be accessed on the way how we could get that data, provided we follow the certain prohibitions and the policies being attached to it and the privacy associated to it by the lawful owner. Okay. So no big deal. These challenges could be uh, suppressed. Now in terms of capacity, capacity, which, which when we talk of capacity, we are referring to the capacity of uh, human resources to access to utilize and of course to manipulate the uh, use of our technologies. So needless to say that at present, the battle cry of uh, the third world country is the capacity to access to that technology. We know very well that uh, the technology is expensive and our farmers are poor and our uh, upland farmers are uh, handicapped. Okay. So farming systems is also one of the influences that affects. So farming system adaptation. Will this technology adapted in the Philippines or will this technology adapted in Indonesia? Okay. So our farming system could be influenced by the type of intelligence machine that we would like to use. This is the prime consideration. Can we... <coughs> In agroforestry, we know very well that agroforestry is a multiple use concept on the land management. Whereas the application of AI in many uh, advanced country is on monocropping system. Now remember that agroforestry is a combination of two or more resources which could be produced simultaneously or could be produced uh, sequentially. The use of robotics could be complicated. The use of robotics in uh, agroforestry could be a futile if you get it right. Because we are uh, having uh, this what we call uh, rugged terrain. And of course, a uh, complex socio biophysical system. Unlike what you see on the pictures, most of the agricultural productivity, the lands are a uh, smoothly wide fast terrain which the machine could perfectly do without much. There is some homogeneity of the sites which cannot uh, bother the functions of an intelligence machine. So in terms of application in, in agroforestry, we can say that there is a need to have a complicated machine to capture all the going systems in the uh, forestry, the diversity of uh, the environment could highly be distorted with the use of our intelligence machine. So you can draw back. Those are the challenges that influence. Of course, the purchase price is much. The IT infrastructure could also be complicated. The technical maintenance and servicing, of course, it, it doesn't matter anyway. But uh, associated to the use of intelligence machine is the technical maintenance and servicing that we would want to make or that we would want to prepare because 
we want to optimize the use of the machine. If there is no technical maintenance and servicing, well, uh, it's only a one-shot deal activity for us. We cannot uh, do. We cannot make the use of the machine durable. We cannot use reuse that in so many times, you know, without technical maintenance. So this is a challenge. So another thing is the society and culture. Well, you know very well that traditionally it would be hard time for us to conclude that indeed this this uh, machine could be a great help. Because as we have said, as I have said before, there is an associated trade-off on this matter. The use of intelligence machine reduces the use of labor. The unemployment rate will soar high. And the, the use of uh, this, what we call intelligence, the use of uh, uh, software, the use of software versus hardware can be uh, more challenging. And the, the process of monitoring can all, could also be, be an issue you know, since, uh, since the society and culture play a very significant role. Okay. The, the influences of the machine can uh, be negatively captured by our society because of the inherent feelings associated to our human resources. It would be hard for you to be monitored because you have uh, inner feelings which cannot be captured by the machine. So society and culture, <laughs> of course, not much with the society, also with our culture. It is always a culture for us to be like when we are getting old, you know, we have to be uh, exposed field, on the field in order to renew our vigor. As we get old, we tend to be more uh, tendency, there's a more tendency for us to be exposed on the field so that we can rejuvenate our life. But anyway, uh, the optimization and the use of resources mobilization is also a great challenge. Yes. As we have said, which of which is better, which of which is uh, sophisticated, which of which is desired by majority. Not all the technologies that we will be throwing in the future will be captured by our generation. Uh, it has always been uh, a, a practice, it's all been a, always been an experience of us that we met uh, the technology in, in the future with great desire. When there is a new technology, we meet it with great pride, with great celebration, but at the end of the day, we regret because we did not reflect. So is it really an optimized use of resources, which is our battle cry? So developing countries in agriculture robotics perspective, in agriculture and forestry, there are two main exist in terms of automation in agriculture. One, the creation of scraps of new equipment to perform different uh, operations or service serves as multiple post platform for a range of tasks similar to be performed by a tractor when fitted with the right implements for a specific uh, farm. Okay. Then another is the conversion of standards agricultural equipment into an autonomous tool, though the use of sensor and automatism designed to replace the physical uh, nature of the farmer's state. Next. So in some developing countries, mainly in our uh, region, the Asian region, the domestic industry of small machine and engine, including machinery repair and servicing has, expand, has expanded in recent decades and has the potential to form the basis of local autonomy or autonomous equipment industry, okay, as cited by Bigson. So here are some of the important important or importance that we could uh, achieve in terms of the use of your intelligence, use of your application of your agriculture in forestry. So look at it. The multiple application and possible uses of agrobot can provide important support to rural livelihood. Of course, livelihood, especially once the uh, 
Internet of Things, IoT, Internet of Things is further developed. Why? Many of our youth are already inclined to the use of ICT. Many professions are adhering to the Internet of Things. For example, simple web platform that follow a person carrying a smartphone could help to carry the goods, drinking water or heavy tools, significantly reducing drudgery and increasing productivity for a person who relies on their own muscle power. So even the disabled person can now use to manage a farm with the use of our internet connectivity. We can monitor the field without going to the field. So it reduces consumption of fuel wood in deforestation. So this is a positive effect. Produce fuel and electricity at the local level. And of course, make good fertilizer, reduce cooking time, and of course, the, the reduction of drudgeries or worries. Drudgery. So the human can become multiple with the use of gadgets. So what is the contributions of uh, AR? A agriculture to sustainable development. One, improvements of livelihood, food sovereignty and adequate nutrition, creation of employment, closing technological division, and sustainable resource management, and impact on rural migration dynamics. Okay. So here are some of the sustainable development goals that could be associated to the use of by the the artificial intelligence. Poverty, of course, zero hunger, decent work, economic growth, industry, infrastructure, responsible consumption, etc., etc., and life on the land. So, here to have the concluding remarks, according to FAO, while agricultural robots are still in the early stage, there are very clear indications of their potentials. Of course, the challenges ahead are not only technical but economic in particular with regards to capacity building and the need to fully uh, okay and the need to fully achieve economic in particular with regards to capacity building and to fully unless the principle and technologies involved however giving their versatility Okay, fully understand the principle and technologies involved. However, given the versatility, a robot will not be able to perform tasks under conditions that are by nature very labor intensive and thus make an important contribution to improving sustainable crop production and the livelihoods of smallholder farms in the country. Agricultural robot present an opportunity to increase crop production efficiently improve agriculture sustainable and bring innovation in advanced technology to a new era. According to FAO, as an important role to play in this process, pushing the inclusive development of this technology and ensuring that the agriculture technology in the form of automated tools. And bots are helping to enhance and promote principle of sustainable intensification of agriculture. Okay. Uh, in my final uh, conclusion, final concluding remark, the quest to improve farming system to increase profitability is now at hand because of the advent of the fourth generation of agriculture and agroforestry technology. But like other technologies that we adopted, there are trade-offs that associates with it, like our GMO, genetic modified organism. With all these development trends, the quest is who really benefits from it? The country's first main source is through manual labor in the farm via low level technology, or the highly rich countries in the mass high consumption stage of development. Will it create more polarity between rich and the poor? We also must reflect before we regret. Thank you so much, and God bless to each and every one of you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dr. Lee Sosalerino, for a, his interesting topic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so now we will invite to the next speaker, 
Mr. Wardana with his topic about information technologies in agribusiness. So please welcome Mr. Wardana S. Hood, MSE. Time is yours. I want to repeat once again. Yes. Uh, sir, please, uh, can you close your... Mr. Lieso, can you stop to say your... Mr. Lisotelarino, close to say your, your slides, please. Okay. okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, the next, I uh, will try to invite once again to meet the Wardana as the next speaker. Uh, but before that, I want to try to uh, uh, give the a little bit about uh, his curriculum today. Uh, his bachelor, that is in university, forest faculty, forest product technology program, and master degree in Bogor Agricultural University, agricultural faculty, master of agricultural industrial technology. And then his skills, computer programmer, that is include visual basic net language, PHP and Python, and programming book writer in Ellipse Media Publishing Jakarta. That is a little bit about uh, his CV. So for uh, his uh, good chance, I will uh, please to Ms. Wardana to present his topic. Thank you. Give me a chance to uh, present my presentation. The title of the, my presentation is the information technology. Okay, uh, before I give the presentation, I, I will ask you, uh, show you the map of presentation. It's about agriculture. Uh, first of all, I will uh, tell about uh, food income from agriculture and then from the agriculture, we will talk about information technology or IT and the information, information technology or IT in uh, 4.0, we will talk about artificial intelligence. From artificial intelligence, we will talk some of artificial intelligence like uh, gene editing, threat opting, drone, expert system, and robotic. After that all, we will talk about uh, big data uh, from internet and the company. I think the, it is a uh, need uh, to me to to give uh, information about big data because uh, in in for, uh, point zero, we will always talk about big data because there are so many big data in our world. And from the big data, we will uh, continue about data science who can handle the big data. The, from data science, we will talk about uh, software, program line news. Okay. Uh, first of all, we will talk about agriculture. Okay. Next. The introduction. Agriculture, as we know, agriculture give uh, food and income for farmer. But for make efficiency, we will need uh, information technology. Next. Uh, to solve this problem uh, in agriculture, like uh, filming or of increasing demand for food, poverty, and malnutrition reduction, 
we can use technology because this present time, every sector, as we know, has benefit from the impact of technology. So I think has agriculture. Pharma depend on information technology for many things, not just in managing farm operation. In fact, information technology has changed the way in which pharma many crop and livestock. Next. Now, farmer, uh, now, farmer can use a mobile phone, as you know. Uh, there are uh, so many mobile phones. Me and my father, my son, every everyone I, I, in the world, I think, use a mobile phone. Agriculture can use a mobile phone <coughs> to access customers and actionable agriculture information in real time. It could uh, reponalysis how this communicates as cure and improve their life good. By making the right investment today, while many agriculture technician officials are restricted from visiting farmer in person, especially in uh, COVID-19, we can kickstart digital adoption and start to close the income gap the has long get ruler areas back. Next. Now, here is the some uh, information technology which can use in uh, agriculture. First, uh, marketing information system with give the and manage the data of uh, marketing, extension information system, farm information system, warehouse information system, and geographic information, information system. Okay, for uh, the emerging uh, technology, now we can use uh, artificial intelligence. It's refer the simulation of human intelligence in machine that are programmed to think like human in mimic direction. The term may also apply to any machine that exhibits right associated with a human mind, such as learning and problem solving. So it is, uh, the point is, how to make uh, the mission is uh, clipper like a human. For example, uh, AI is a smart assistant, you know, like a Google Assistant, Siri uh, from Amazon and Alexa from uh, Apple. This is mapping and prediction tool, manufacturing and drone robot, optimus, personalist, healthcare, treatment recommendation, uh, conversational bot for marketing and customer service, robo as feature for stock trading, spam filter on email, yes, like uh, email. You may see uh, how our uh, email can uh, filter uh, what we don't have uh, yet. Social media monitoring tool for dangerous content or fast news, some artificial recommendation from Spotify and Netflix. Next. Okay, uh, gen editing, you know, it is about how to make a plan a novel. It can use uh, artificial intelligence like uh, algorithm, a genetic algorithm, I mean. Gen editing is one of sweet modern biotechnologies designed to change genome of living organism for health and or economic benefit. It allows scientists to make small practices change to genome of plant, animal, and human. To that, it is primary use has been in human health. However, there are many emerging applications for food and agriculture. Next. In plant, you know, uh, gene editing is performed on culture plant cell, which are then generated into wool plant, resulting in improvements such as disease, resistance, doctorality, or the efficiency of ligand. In animal, gene editing is performed on the single cell that develops into an embryo, which grows into animal. Gene editing has created improvement to that such as polyethylene cattle, in exact identification for poultry and virus resistant pig. Okay, here is the example of gene editing to make a plan a novel than before. It can use genetic algorithm from the AI. Okay, next. Yeah, you can call that a genetic modified organism. 
It is about a GMO, genetic modified uh, organism. Uh, okay, next. I think this next. Okay, uh, the next uh, AI, the popular AI is about Internet of Things, or we can call get that uh, IoT. The IoT is network object that are connected wirelessly using sensor can transmit information to each other, or we wider network without human intervention. Connecting object can include human, animal, plant, and infrastructure. Example equipment, building, and uh, talk sensing data is not new. Technology investment is cost, quality, and robustness of sensor and enabling data analysis and connectivity technologies have accelerated the potential of the EOT agriculture. Next. Okay, here is uh, the example of a EOT equipment. There is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, sensor. Okay, it is uh, the intruder detector. We can use in EOT if intruder detected, maybe like a pest or or human. Uh, the buzzer will automatically active, and the information will be displayed on LCD screen. And here is the humidity sensor. We put in the humidity sensor detect the groundwater content in the soil, and if the fellway is below the standard, the water pump will be active to increase the water content. So we can control the humidity of soil. Uh, here is the report of uh, EOT, like uh, leaf disease detector. It saw foiler disease for specific plant using a VI camera attached to Raspberry Pi. Based on the image processing technique, certain disease of leaves will be uh, detected. The pack is also display temperature and humidity and detection of intruder in a giving field. Next, your uh, device collect data. It can improve a grower and make, making a, including the ability to cut costs, improve yield, monitor crop, generally increase situational awareness across the farming operation. First sensor connected to the IoT can record information regarding soil measure, natural level, and so on. Uh, in terms of agriculture of food, implementation of the IoT along supply chain has the potential to bring transparency in provenance to consumer. It as well as improve food quality and reduce food supply issues and food fraud. The IoT will also help give consumer confidence in the verify of claim they may see on marketing material, for example, around animal welfare or environmental stewardship. Next. Okay, the example is EA is drone. Drone is dependent as an animated uh, radio controller air cap that can be operated remotely or autonomously through software managed fly plan in their embed system on board sensor and GPS. Uh, drone can collect multispectral, he capture uh, in surface of uh, earth, thermal and visual imagery while flying. The data it gather uh, provide farmer with insight into the whole array of metric. Plan health he in the plan counting and yield prediction. Plan height measurement, canopy cover mapping, fill water phone mapping, scouting report, stock file measuring, chlorophyll measurement, nitrogen content in wet, and dryness mapping and wet pressure mapping and crop spraying and so on. There are so many uh, useful of drone. Okay, next. Uh, export system, it is uh, how to make a machine uh, have a diligent like uh, export. Export system is an interactive and reliable computer based decision making system which it uses both fact and heuristic to solve complex decision making problem it is considered at the high level of human intelligence and expertise the purpose 
of an expert system is to solve the most complex issues in the specific domain. So the expert system can resolve many issues which generally would require a human expert. It is based on knowledge acquired from the expert. Yeah. It is the, the diagram or image. So how uh, the expert give the knowledge to the system and the programmer make a rule engine and enterprise. What? And then a uh, user can interact with the uh, effort system. Okay. Here is the simple of a uh, rule engine. It is about it is make uh, if else if else a uh, rule back from the uh, user given system and system uh, classify and identify to make a decision. Okay, next. Okay, uh, robotic. Robotic is the science and technology of mechanical mobile structure functional under some form of automated control. Robotic technology is being utilized with machine that can substitute for human to increase efficiency or complete task demand to danger. Dull or impossible for human. In industries like logistics, meaning healthcare, military, manufacturing, and agriculture. Okay. In agriculture, the use of robot uh, to complete tasks such as uh, dairy making, harvesting, spraying, surveying has replaced the need for human labor and delivers benefits including higher quality of press products and lower production costs. Robotic and automation technology also part of promise to provide a grower with greater uh, knowledge of the state of their operation and capability for acting, acting in real time to increase efficiency, reliability, productivity while minimize and appropriate impact. Here is the simple of uh, robotic in agriculture, processing and supplying the plant. Okay, next. Now, from the equipment, internet and company, we can find the big data. Big data is a term for large and complex set of data in which traditional methods of processing data are insufficient. Next. Big data emerged uh, from the early 20s data boom, driven forward by many the early internet and technology companies. Software and hardware capabilities uh, could, for the first time in history, keep up the massive amount of untreated information pro products by consumer. New technologies like the search engine, mobile device, industrial machine, provide as much data as companies could handle. And the scale continues to grow. Right. Increasingly, the organization today are facing and more great uh, challenge. The, they have access to web information, but they don't know how to get value out of it because it is sitting, it is it a uh, raw form in a semi structure or unstructured format. And as a result, they don't even know whether it's with uh, keeping or even able to keep it for the that matter. Next. Uh, there are uh, three concepts of uh, defined big data. We know that big data from the volume, verify, and velocity. It is, uh, you can see the figure one. Uh, the data is uh, changed from the structure to an structure and unstructured from bit to streaming data to terabyte uh, capacities to gigabyte. So the big data is uh, grower uh, bigger and bigger. Next. Big data analytic uh, led to more precise analysis that help to bring more accurate decision making. 
So we can um, use uh, big data to to make decision making. What is the better decision making? To better perform, uh, big data are collected either top structure and unstructured data source. It could be from online or offline data. It, unstructured data can come from social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and so on. While structured data source can come from internal database of organization. In uh, business, both source are used to understand the pattern of the customer. I think uh, the big data is need to know by the agriculture uh, expert because if we want to win in the competition in marketing, we must know about now how to handle a big data. Okay, big data analytics is giving data management supporting tool to analysis store recent result, recent uh, comprehensive result, yet user friendly, friendly form structure and structure data are biggest challenge in big data analytics. It is a required a new assessment of tool and method in order to gain and expect training. For instance, it is a big challenge for communing uh, CTP record, audio conversation, social network activities, CRM record to refer pattern. Now, to handle big data, we need uh, data science. So what is data science? Data science is an interdisciplinary uh, field that uses scientific method, process, algorithm, and system to extract knowledge and insight from any structure and unstructured data. Data science is a concept used to tackle big data and include data cleansing, preferencing, and analysis. A data science gather uh, data from multiple source and apply machine learning, ready uh, analytic and sentiment analysis to extract critical information from the collect data set. They understand data, data from a business point of view and can provide a courage prediction and insight that can be used to power critical business decision. In turn, the system generate insight with analysis and business user can translate into tangible business value. Next. Okay, uh, if you want to be a data scientist, what we must know, first we know, you must know about machine learning. I will uh, give you the present next in like, uh, right? A strong canal like, of oh, no, 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 that, but a strong canal like of uh, Python, Fast air scale. It is uh, the kind of uh, language program. And on experience in SQL database coding, apply to work with unstructured data from various source like video and social media, and understanding as understand multiple analytic function. Okay, next. The data analysis is usually uh, the person who can do the basic descriptive uh, statistic, visualize data, and communicate data point for conclusion. They must have a basic understanding of statistics, a perfect sense of database, the ability to create a new view, and the perception to visualize the data. Data analytics can be referred to necessary level of data science. So what is the difference of data science and data analytics? Data science is an umbrella term in compass data analytics, data mining, machine learning, and several other related disciplines. While data science is affected to forecast the future based on the past pattern. Data analysts extract meaningful insight from various data source. Uh, what does data science do? Uh, the data science do uh, first take a coding. Now, how to make, how to make and statistic and knowledge, how to knowledge uh, communication with other. So, uh, it is uh, the, the need uh, modern scientists, math statistics, program database, domain knowledge and soft skill, communication and television. Okay, next. Okay, I have told you about uh, machine learning. Machine learning is can be defined as the practice of using algorithm to extract data 
learn from it, and then forecast future trend for the topic. Traditional machine learning software is compressed of statistical analysis, predicate analysis, it is spot pattern and catch hidden insight based on perceived data. The good example of machine learning uh, implementation is Facebook. Facebook can gather our information, what you have done, and your history. Uh, similarly, when uh, Amazon recommends product or when Netflix recommendation movies based on past behavior, machine learning is at work. Okay. Here's the different of artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning. Next. Machine learning uh, needs a uh, human to extract, but deep learning uh, does not. Deep uh, learning can, can learn uh, how to uh, deeper, how to classify the object. Okay, next. Okay, uh, there are so many. Uh, so for in internet and it is uh, free to to handle the big data uh, first uh, key name we can download at uh, www.kinem.com kinem make understanding the data and the science data science workflow and visible component visibility to everyone by being intuitive often considering introducing a new development we have a uh, statistic feature, but have a uh, machine learning feature too. It can uh, clustering and reduction the data, visual data with uh, classic like uh, bar chart, scatter plot, and so on. Next, it is the GUI, the GUI of uh, Kinem. You can download it and it is free. And the uh, tutorial is uh, many we, we can find in YouTube. Okay, next. Okay, uh, second software is uh, Rapid Manner. It is free to uh, we can dot at uh, HTTPS RapidManner.com. Rapid Manner is a data science platform in development for non programmer research for quick analysis of data. So when you use uh, Rapid Manner. You you don't have you don't need a uh, language program skill. The user has an ID in their mind and easily create a process, import data into them, run them over and throw prediction model. There are uh, so many uh, features in uh, rapid manner, uh, like uh, random forest, gradient boss, clustering. Uh, Outler event visualization output. Next, here is the GUI of uh, Rapid Manner. There are uh, so many tutorial in uh, Rapid Manner, so uh, we we can let it by 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 yourself. Okay. Uh, programming language uh, in a uh, in data science. Sometimes we need a uh, programming language. Uh, the Python, the Python is a uh, famous uh, programming language to handle uh, big data. It is free too. Uh, we can download at uh, double three three double u uh, Python or G. Python is generally available to code in comparison to other popular languages such as Java. And uh, the biggest uh, feature uh, for me from Python is uh, if we want to make uh, some code, we just need a uh, short code uh, compare, compare with uh, Java or uh, C++. And we said that uh, Python can use in uh, EOT machine. So if you learn uh, Python, you can uh, use it uh, many things. You can make a, a website application, make a desktop application. There are so many uh, benefits from uh, learn the Python uh, language. Okay, next. Uh, Python uh, has been shortlisted as the programming language uh, of the choose data science. 
it is the most popular news in the world and especially community of user. So there are so many users uh, of uh, Python news. It is free and flexible. It offers easy syntax that cut the development time. It provides machine learning, library for scientific computation. This language is good starting uh, point for data science who plan to experience a lot of before jumping into the real and hot data data crunching work and who want to develop complete application. Next. Uh, here is the Python website. You can download it from it. Next. Uh, next programming language is uh, R. R language. We can download at, at uh, triple U uh, R, R project .org. The R language is mainly used statistical data processing, mapping, is capabilities for data cleaning, uh, data reduction, data analysis, report. It is like a method if you know that. But the, <coughs> and R can permit complex mathematical operation by using single command. But we cannot make a desktop application like a Python. Okay, next. Okay, uh, there is the impact of the AI. First, economic improvement and progress because we know the AI make uh, our activities to uh, production efficiency. We can reduce the year losses, increase. There is no limitation uh, from the human because it is automatic. Uh, point two, uh, change business uh, process and model because there are so many uh, applications like uh, warehouse information system which can uh, sort the supply chain management. But the impact of A is, is, is need a bigger capital because the the purchase of equipment is uh, rather expensive. And then the impact of uh, the AI is both security and privacy. As we know, uh, because the AI using the electric uh, equipment and the connect with uh, in internet system, so maybe possible a uh, hacker can take over your account to control the AI. So we will need a uh, hard uh, security for that. Okay, next point is about uh, standard then no, no, standard and interoperable Operability is about uh, the standard how the equipment device uh, connect well each other. And grid energy equipment because the equipment of AE like uh, interrupting need uh, electric uh, power. So the user must give uh, or have uh, energy uh, supplier. Uh, Disrupt technology. It is about uh, the defense of AE, like IoT. If uh, broken, it will be uh, garbage and maybe uh, solid the environmental, natural environmental. Environmental issues, it is about, uh, about, uh, yeah, about the, the security, privacy, uh, the owner. The, if we put uh, data from our technology, our, our EOT to cloud, maybe the owner of cloud or management of digital data uh, can use your data to his personal use. Who can uh, ensure that if the uh, data manager uh, using is illegally. Rules and legal protection, it is about our 
uh, profile our uh, is activity story. Some sometimes we we don't want to solve our activities, but the system of IE can uh, record our activities, so we, it can uh, block our uh, personalities. Next. The conclusion of my PowerPoint is uh, there are many positive and negative values of information technology. One of the positive values is helping human work for activities if in the accordance with the procedure. However, there are also negative values from the efficiency of information technology and AOT, including uh, financial, I mean, uh, the big uh, capital, and the use of information technology or EOT is not an easy thing because the investment made may reach million of rupees. Therefore, study is needed in understanding in fact, the factor that influence the success or failure of the application of this technology. Okay, I think this all uh, for me, from me, uh, time I give the moderator. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, sir, for your presentation, the interesting presentation from Mr. Wardana. Uh, because we have limited time, so I would like to invite the last speaker of our international webinar today. I would like to invite Mr. Angelo Francis Atole as the head of Department of Animal Science, CBESUA, uh, with his topic about agriculture 4.0 in animal science. Okay, please welcome Mr. Angelo Francis Atole. Time is yours. I think yeah. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Okay. Um. Good morning. May you please enable my my account so that I can share my screen. Hello, ma'am. Will you please enable my account so I can I can share my screen? Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, with your permission, please allow me to share my screen. Unfortunately, I cannot do it, and uh, still, it's disabled. May I request to be a co-host, please, so I can share my screen? Yeah. <laughs> objectives Yes, ma'am. Yes. Can see that. Okay. 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 Hello, good morning.
Iya sama-sama. Nah, kami itu aku. Oke. Enam. Nanti nak kita sen. Adik tak kau senang. Tidak. Hello once again, good morning. Hello ma'am, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, good morning everyone to the administrators of the two institutions collaborated for the CBSUA headed by, by our president, Dr. Alberto N. Naperi, to the administrators of uh, University of Muhammadiyah, Buton. Good morning. Good morning. Organizers good morning. of this webinar. Uh, once again, good morning. Um, today, I will be discussing Agriculture 4.0 in Animal Production. I am Angelo Francis Atoli from the Central Vehicle State University of Agriculture. And before I formally start my lecture, I would like to present the overview of my topic. First, I will discuss how did we arrive into Agriculture 4.0. Second, why do we need Agriculture 4.0 at present? Third, are the challenges that animal industry faces in Agriculture 4.0 and fourth, is the summary of my presentation. And lastly, is a take home message to think of. So to start with, Okay, so, so to start with, the first revolution in agriculture was the use of draft animals in farming. Then brilliant people invented equipment that are equipped with the combustion engine like tractors to hasten feeling of the land. Because of the increasing knowledge in science and technology and environmental hazards of inefficient use of resources, people develop the precision agriculture. This includes the use of drones in fertilizing of crops, application of pesticides, and the like. Then, to us in the operation, to us in the operation, uh, in a more precise way, cloud connection is now being used by farmers, and this is agriculture 4.0. So farmer uses internet through their smartphones to monitor their crops and animals. Now, the next slide is why agriculture 4.0? We have an increasing population, therefore, we need to produce more food in the most efficient way. For example, by 2050, the world population is estimated to reach 10 billion people, and we need to produce 70% more food to feed this number, meaning we need lesser resources such as land, water, and other inputs to produce the same quantity of food or even more. Relative to this, many people from rural areas will migrate to urban areas to look for jobs. If you can notice, now the average age of farmers is getting older. This is because the younger generation's interest in agriculture is declining, as previously mentioned by Professor Desol. They don't like dirty jobs, and this is realized by developed countries like in New Zealand and Canada. So for their agriculture to continue, they hire foreign workers. Another challenge is the animal welfare issues uh, our animals are facing today. Many countries, especially the third world countries, observe less the welfare of their farm animals. But this is opposite for developed countries like in Europe and the US. In these countries, citizens affect positively the government as to the welfare issues. Therefore, government find ways to encourage farmers to promote the better welfare of their animals. For example, in the Netherlands, dairy cows are grazed for certain periods in a year. In return, Farmers receive incentives for laying hens, battery cages will be banned soon. Producing more food emits more greenhouse gases to the environment. And cattle contribute more into this. They are the less efficient converter of feeds into products such as beef and milk when compared to other farm animals like broilers and hogs. 
therefore, there is a conflict for land use. Agriculture lands are converted into industrial or residential lands. So what we do is we convert other lands such as forested lands, like in Brazil, to produce soybean. We deforest in order to use the land for agricultural purposes. In worst cases, some bodies of water such as seas are reclaimed for a more profitable and productive investments like in Dubai for tourism. The trade-off is we destroy the wildlife and thus affecting negatively the diversity of species. Unfortunately, this has a negative effect at present and in the future. Lastly, are the calamities such as flash floods, typhoons, extreme dust that we are experiencing. For example, in the Philippines, we have approximately 20 typhoons a year. And some of these are really, really devastating, like what happened last year. We were hit by three strong typhoons at short intervals. We need to make agriculture resilient and sufficient. For these reasons, the animal industry faces a greater challenge under Agriculture 4.0. Well, first, we need to make animal production environmentally and economically sustainable without sacrificing the volume of produce. The environmental resources should not be exploited to the extent. Have in mind that, only the that not only the environmental and economic sustainability that we have to consider, but we have to consider as well the safety of our produce for a better welfare of consumers. How can we achieve this? We need to produce meat that is safe and ethical. For example, in the Netherlands that they're studying the potential of laboratory meat. The meat is produced in vitro, meaning a cell from a live animal will be cultured in a laboratory to regenerate in a media. So the food that we serve must be free from hazardous chemicals. Another example is that the excessive use of uh, antibiotics and hormones in animal production may affect negatively the well-being of consumers. The food additives that we use in order to augment the quality of products, if you can recall, the melamine issue in milk was a great problem way back. The aforementioned issues can be partially remedied using innovative technologies in order to make animal production efficient and effective. For example, cows are installed with a tracking device in order to monitor and observe their movement and behavior other than the traditional way of following them in the pasture throughout the day. We need to build animal facilities wherein we can manipulate the internal environment when the external environment is less favorable, for example, those that are practiced in Israel. And these are now being adopted in the third world countries, for example, like Philippines, maybe Indonesia. They are, they are investing on it as they realize the negative effects of unfavorable environment to the performance of their animals. Another is the use of alternative protein sources in animal production is now being studied. For example, algae has a, greater, has a greater potential as protein source for animals. When compared to fish meal, the volume of produce depends on the volume of catch. Therefore, the availability and supply is not dependent on the catching of fish. Another is the use of super sperm from superior bulls. Bull traits are matched with the cow traits in order to produce offspring that are better than their parents. The technique is not just by inseminating a cow, with a bull semen, but a scrutinized matching of traits is performed. This is to correct some of the inferior traits of a superior cow in order to sustain the genetics for high milk production in the next offspring or in the next generation. Genetic modifications to meet the needs of the future also exist. For example, the extreme growth have urged scientists to develop and breed herderless chicken. The feed that is intended for feather growth and maintenance goes to muscle development. In fact, an efficient way of producing broilers, but there are trade-offs. Anybody? Well, roosters have difficulty in mating hens because they lack wing feathers to flop and balance during mounting. Another is the breeding and selection of Belgian blue cattle. Muscles produced are bigger than a usual cattle. Therefore, more meat is produced per unit of animal at a given amount of resources. 
Of course, there are trade-offs when we do this. Example is that difficulty in giving birth may be experienced by heifers due to relatively large cubs. Vital organs are reduced due to the occupancy of muscles in the abdominal wall. Another is that animals have discomfort because heavier they are, uh, the more difficult they will move. And this is similar in dairy cows selected for big udders in order to produce more milk. And this is linked to the next slide that I will present. Animals must be raised in a more welfare-friendly manner. In Europe, citizens are very vigilant as to the welfare of farm animals. They will protect the animals as much as they can, so they will protest a farm if they saw anomalies. They may refuse to buy their produce in the market, a form of protest, or they will complain to the government. Therefore, the government should act on the issue and farmers must comply. Otherwise, farmers will be penalized. Broilers or layers are raised in range by allowing them to access the pasture instead of completely confining them like what we are doing. Consequently, animal welfare is violated and we don't like that. The use of robotics in animal production is now being enhanced for efficient animal production. For example, there are modernized dairy farms that when high producing cows entered the milking parlor, rotation slows down in order to complete milk collection. And this is a humanless maneuver. The machine per se performs this. Relatively, body condition scoring may be performed by a scanner robot. When a cow enters the chute, the machine scans the cow and tells the body condition score at a relatively short period of time. And rather, maybe, may also give the information on the amount of diet that should be given in each cow. Instead of using manpower to perform body condition scoring alone. Well, to summarize my presentation, industrialization in animal agriculture is driven by the citizens affecting the government and the environmental issues brought by inefficient animal production. Therefore, the sustainability of agriculture 4.0 in animal production is welfare, economically, and environmentally challenged. But have in mind that there are trade-offs when agriculture 4.0 continues. Unemployment rate will increase. Many people will lose their jobs, especially those with less favored skills and specialization. On the other hand, uh, IT experts and the like will gain more because their specialization is in demand. The culture in agriculture will change. The next generation of farmers may forget the old and traditional way of farming, like what our ancestors did. Human attitude may affect the speed of adapting agriculture 4.0. More educated farmers and developed countries may adjust rapidly when compared to third world countries. So we have to think and decide smartly for a better world. And that ends my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so I don't think I'm Ini, ini okay na didi, ini didi po man.
take this and Oh. You fax it. This time is yours. I want to repeat once again, sir, the question from Muhammad Hibrian. Yes. Uh, the question is, is there any effect of applying Internet of Things like radio wave to human, animal, and plant? That's the question. Hello, ma'am. May I know if to whom is the question? Is is my voice is clear, sir? Yes, ma'am. To whom you are addressing the question, please? Yeah. Meaning? Yeah. Meaning? 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 Okay. Yeah, the, the question actually related to all the speakers' presentations. Uh, okay. Yes, maybe uh, Mr. Angelo can uh, try to give the answer first, or maybe Mr. Uh, Salarino Lieso can uh, give the answer from. Could you, repeat, could you repeat the question? Okay, I okay okay. So I will repeat it once again. Uh, is there? Uh, any effect of applying Internet of Things like radio wave to human, animal, and plant? Yeah, the effect of radio wave because uh, sometimes it gives the bad impact for a human and animal or plant by because of the radio wave. Okay, good morning to everyone. A radio, wave, radio wave has already been uh, devolved to the community even before the, the, the internet connection, the, the radio, television, and other forms of uh, media. And uh, the record shows that uh, the extent of such undertaking is tolerable at, the, at present. But uh, as regards to the application of uh, uh, internet on of things you know, then we, we can say that uh, the effect would be uh, minimal it cannot be measured at present because uh, there is no such massive use of such uh, undertaking especially now that we are uh, in the era of agriculture so no 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 records still show that uh, indeed this will have a, a harm to plants and animals as we can observe it, it is more it is the, the pandemic of covid is more harmful than the uh, radiation that we could get from the radio okay okay thank you sir maybe uh, mr angelo will try to give another additional information again about this okay thank you ma'am uh, can you hear me? Yeah, related okay. to the radio wave that um, uh, give the effect to animal in this case. I think anything that is too much is harmful, but with, with the experts that we have uh, throughout the world, before they put it into public, uh, they studied it very well. And and I'm I am confident that before this, these technologies will be for pub, uh, available for public use, uh, they will they will really test it as to the effects on the animals, whether it is negative or positive. And I think they will do the same also in human. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot uh, completely answer in human as this is of different specialization. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, maybe if there is. Uh, Participant again want to give uh, their questions here, so you can just type on chat box. I will read your question one by one, and then 
try to give the chance to the speakers to answer your questions. Yeah, so the next questions from the participants, uh, Mr. Wardana, uh, this is about, I want to try to read. So the question is, uh, is there any application that can be used in monitoring and controlling and uh, to know the best or worst field condition or can tell the farmer how well a field decides that app application can provide full information about the field's condition? Okay. Is it? Uh, Please time is yours, sir. Okay, thank you. As far as now, uh, there are some sensor in EOT, which is like a camera, which can identify the object in camera. The technology is, uh, we can call uh, machine learning. It can uh, identify uh, everything at, by training. So the, the technology in, in artificial intelligence uh, can learn uh, many things, can learn object, if we training training them so by training uh, machine learning will know the object by its pattern so but about the application uh, maybe uh, free in internet we can get it uh, there is no but the technology is exist the learning the learning machine learning it is the part of the artificial intelligence to know object by training. So if we are a programmer, we can make it by yourself. I think that's all. Okay, Probably. that's thank it. You. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, maybe for another speakers who want to give the additional information again about this, maybe from uh, Mr. Celerino or uh, Mr. Angelo related to these questions. Uh, the question in chat box, sir, about uh, the application that can be used to monitor and controlling uh, the best or worst field condition, or yeah, how how farmer can do to uh, yeah in the field condition like no dice. Thank you, sir. In terms of uh, the issues on counseling about farmers, I think um, the, the best thing that we, that the development uh, planners as well as the local government units should do, and as well as the academy, is for us to extend our community outreach program among farmers in order to reach out their uh, the community for uh, reorienting the values as well as uh, in mentoring what would be the effect of uh, this uh, agriculture 400 in the future because at the end of the day farmers will be uh, one of the which will be uh, probably affected by the advancement of technology remember that the trade-off here is uh, on uh, how our society would be satisfied of what the technologies could be within our senses. Now let, let's take a look at the problem on uh, the aging farmers. You know? And also the, take a look at the in, uh, in increasing increase of the youth on technology. You know? I think this could be perhaps one of the uh, springboard by which the counseling as well as the uh, development oriented organization would have to take a look. So, uh, values as an important indicators of success of every undertaking. So, even we have so sophisticated technology, if the values and attitudes of our farmers, of our, our stakeholders, cannot capture its uh, development alternatives, then we also fail uh, humanly. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. From Mr. Angel. Okay, thank you. Um, my answer will uh, will focus on animal production. Uh, to my knowledge, there are there are applications uh, used in in detecting whether the environment is good or bad, but it's more on modeling. Maybe uh, the, the professor from from Mohammedia can can uh, 
uh, will agree with me that it's uh, setting such environment based on research uh, will be applied in a model so that the sensor per se can determine when, for example, the temperature exceeds uh, 37 degrees Celsius, then therefore the, the, the environment temperature is, is bad for the animals. Or maybe the moisture is set only for around 70% uh, and then therefore if the moisture exceeds 70% then therefore the, the 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 sensor will 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 detect it and in the program it will say that the external environment as to the moisture content is bad for the animals so these are commonly installed in 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 environment uh, controlled farms particularly in the united states in developed countries wherein they have this these sensors that controls the 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 favorable environment based on the model. I think that would be my answer now. Hello, ma'am. Masih dalam proses? Oh ya. Oh, kan? We are very sorry, sir, because uh, there are some technical mistaken for Hello, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Was my answer clear or they, they need uh, to yes. repeat? Yes, it's clear, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because we have so limited time, it shows the time here is 12 past 19. So, mm -hmm. uh, so maybe it's time us to close this uh, great uh, webinar today. Yes, thank you very much for all the speakers that have the, the chance uh, to join the international webinar uh, today. Uh, held by, this is the collaboration between uh, both of the institutions, University of Madia Buton and Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Philippines. Uh, before we close, maybe we will take pictures of us. Yes. Yes, Mr. Salerino. Your picture, please. Okay. 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 Yeah, all the. Participants from Philippines, please, your picture. Yes, all the participants, I mean. Okay. Oh, yeah, please don't forget for all the participants to fill absence, a list of absence that uh, you can see that on chat box. Yes, please uh, try to list absence of our webinar today. Okay, once again, thank you very much for all the participants who can join this web international webinar today. Yes, thank you uh, to Mr. Dr. Salerino Lieso. Thank you for Mr. Angelo Francis Atole. Thank you to Mr. Wardana. Uh, we hope another we can try to collaborate again in other programs or in other activity. Uh, actually. We have for the next, we can uh, try, try to uh, help the program directly. So we can try to meet directly with you in Philippines. Thank you for all the participants. I close this international webinar. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Bye bye. See you. Thank you. See you again, sir. See you again. Thank you. Hopefully, we can meet you directly. Okay. We'll go there. Yes. Thank you.